order to provide a good or service, many businesses store and use hazardous materials at their business locations. When storing hazardous materials, each business is required to follow various statutes and regulations, one of which is the California Health and Safety Code. The California Health and Safety Code defines a hazardous material as any material that poses a significant hazard to human health and safety or to the environment, if released into the environment. This statute also requires that a business report the storage of regulated hazardous materials. There are many different types of regulated hazardous materials that a business may use on a daily basis. Some of them are used so often on a day-to-day -day basis that they seem commonplace, and many people don't think of the material as hazardous while they are using it. Hazardous materials include hazardous substances, hazardous waste, and any material potentially harmful to the environment if released. Some common examples of this are gasoline, pool chemicals, compressed gases such as oxygen and propane, caustic cleaning products such as sodium hydroxide, chlorinated solvents such as methylene chloride, and flammable solvents such as acetone or mineral spirits. Hazardous materials stored at your business need to be reported to this department once the amount of material you have on site, also known as reportable quantity, reaches the threshold amount. The reportable quantity thresholds for hazardous materials are 55 gallons for a liquid, 500 pounds for a solid, and 200 cubic feet for a gas. For those businesses that store extremely hazardous substances, which is uncommon, the reportable quantity is equal to the threshold planning quantity for each listed substance. If a facility stores a hazardous material at or above the reportable quantity, that facility must disclose that material to this department by completing a chemical inventory disclosure. Hazardous material disclosures are part of the hazardous material business plan, which is required to be submitted annually. A hazardous material disclosure form is required to be completed for each hazardous material on site stored in reportable quantity. For example, if an automotive repair facility maintains reportable quantities of three different materials, gear oil, antifreeze, and kerosene, the facility would be required to submit three disclosure forms. If this same facility also maintains reportable quantities of used oils and waste antifreeze, they would need to complete an additional disclosure form for each waste, as hazardous wastes are also a hazardous material. A separate form is not required for materials comprised of the same constituents, such as a 530 weight oil and a 1040 weight oil. When completing a hazardous material disclosure, certain information is required. Some of this information is material specific, such as chemical name and common name, fire code hazard class, hazardous material type, physical state, and a listing by percentage weight of the hazardous components. Some of the information is facility specific, such as the largest container size, the maximum daily amount stored on site, storage container type, chemical location, storage pressure, and storage temperature. There are also data fields to identify trade secret chemicals, radioactive materials, and extremely hazardous substances. The forms are set up with labeled fields for you to fill in the required information. When a facility stores reportable quantities of a new hazardous material on site that has not previously been reported, or if the facility has a significant change of information in regards to a previously reported hazardous material, the facility will need to submit a new hazardous material disclosure form or update and submit an existing one. The purpose of the hazardous material chemical disclosure form, along with the hazardous material business plan, is to provide critical information for emergency responders, to help facilities and emergency response personnel pre-plan for hazardous material emergencies, and to also protect public health and the environment.